Withdrawals do not belong in the income statement. Withdrawals are not considered expenses. That's the one thing you have to be careful with. Then when you get near the bottom, you'll notice the revenue accounts and all the expense accounts. They're all listed. And then you notice they total up all the columns here. You get 4,365. Let me clear this for a second here. That's the one thing you have to be not belong in the income statement. Withdrawals are not considered expenses. That's the one thing you have to be careful with. Then when you get near the bottom, you'll notice the revenue accounts and all the expense accounts. They're all listed. And then you notice they total up all the columns here. You get 4,365. Let me clear this for a second here. Uh, when you add up the debits, it's 4,365 in the debit column of the income statement, 8,150 in the credit column of the income statement, $43,245 in the debit column of the balance sheet, and $39,460 credit in column of the balance sheet. And here's how they finish off the worksheet. Look at these two dollar amounts. The total of the debits in the income statement and total of the credits. Total debits four thousand three sixty five. Total credits eight thousand one fifty. Which is the bigger number? Eight thousand one fifty. That's what I want to end with. The larger number. So I have to add three thousand seven hundred eighty five dollars to get to that larger number. Now, if you look at the balance sheet, you have the two totals. There they are right here. Again, what is the larger number? Well, it's the 43245 That's what I want to end with. And I have to add $3,785 to the credit column of the balance sheet to get to the bigger number. Notice, it's the exact same dollar amount the amount that I had to add to the debit column of the income statements to get to the larger number is the exact same dollar amount I need to add to the credit column of the balance sheet to get to the bigger number. It's always going to be the same dollar amount, but opposite column. I'm adding to the debit column of the income statement. I'm going to add the exact same number to the credit column of the balance sheet, and that should give me the larger number out of the two columns. By the way, that dollar amount, in this case, because I'm adding to the debit column the income statement, that's the income. And actually, when you prepare the financial statements, that would be the net income. Now, here's the good news. You don't have to do any worksheets. I just want you to be familiar with it. You know, what's happening on the worksheet is a manual system. They need a place to organize everything. It's a worksheet. It's not a formal statement. Whoever has been doing the books has been taking entries. They've been making the journal entries in the history book, the general journal. They've been posted the ledger. They now want to do financial statements, so they take and they prepare this unadjusted trial balance. Now they know you can't use those figures to do the financial statements. But there's these adjusting entries that we learned about in Chapter 3. So on this worksheet, they make the adjustments. And then they find the balance of each individual account, the adjusted balance. Basically taking the two columns here and merging the data. That's the adjusted balance. Those are the figures that we need to prepare the financial statements. So once they have these adjusted balances, they break the accounts out. Do they belong on the income statement or they belong on the balance sheet. And then they add up the columns. They add them up. Total debits in the income statement, total credits. Total debits on the balance sheet, total credits. And to finish the worksheet, again, if you look at the two amounts on the income statement, the 4,365, 8,150, they want to end with the larger number. So they have to add $3,785 to the debit column of the income statement. 
Now, when they do the same thing to the balance sheet, to add up the debits, the credits, you're going to need the exact same dollar amount, 3785 to the credit column of the balance sheet to get to the bigger number. Same dollar amount, opposite columns. Now, the fact that we're adding to this debit column of the income statement, credit column of the balance sheet, that dollar amount is the actual net income when you do the income statement. The debit column of the income statement, credit column of the balance sheet, we're adding to this debit column of the income statement, credit column of the balance sheet, that dollar amount is the actual net income when you do the income statement. If you would have had to add to these inner columns to get to the bigger number, and again, it would be the same dollar amount, that would be a net loss. That would be a net loss. Now, once you have this worksheet, it's easy to do the income statement. Everything's right here that you need. It's easy to do the statement of owner's equity. It's easy to do the balance sheet. All the information is sort of in one place. So there's the worksheet. Now, most people nowadays are not doing manual systems. You know, they're effectively using a computer. Now, it's still necessary when you're using the computer to do, to do steps one, two, three, four, five, six on the computer. You still have to make the entries. You still have to analyze the transactions. Let me just put this back up here, that other screen. You know, if, if you're using a computer, which most people are doing, someone still has to analyze transactions. They're going to get this paperwork, sales agreements, purchase invoices, checks are going to be written, and, and they're going to say, okay, we have to make a journal entry. What accounts need to be debit or credit? Then they're going to sit down on the computer, and they're going to make the entry. The computer's not going to do that for you. They're going to have to tell the computer, debit cash for 10000 credit to capital account, 10000 Now, once you journalize that, the computer will automatically post those journal entries to the general ledger. You don't have to worry about doing that manually. The machine will do it for you. And at that point, if you wanted an unadjusted trial balance, you could have the computer print out an unadjusted trial balance. It will tell you the balances and all the accounts at that moment. And I mentioned before, usually this is where the CPA firm comes in. You know, a lot of clients, their bookkeeper, they happen to do steps one through four. And what they do is they print out this unadjusted trial balance and that goes to the accountant. Because most bookkeepers don't quite understand maybe these adjusting journal entries, which need to be done if you're going to have the correct financial statements. So the CPA will then take the unadjusted trial balance, make the necessary adjusting entries, give those adjusting entries back to the bookkeeper, send them. Bookkeeper will enter them on the machine, post, you know, automatically the machine will post them to the general ledger, and the machine will print out an adjusted trial balance. In fact, most of the time what will happen, the accountant's doing this and then 
after everything's done, they pass these entries off to the bookkeeper later. And then the bookkeeper updates their machine. And it's from the adjusted trial balance that we prepare the financial statements. Now, we have pretty much covered all of this in the first chapters two and three. You know, you have learned how to, the, the processing, how to record using debit credit, and hopefully you understand the process, you understand adjusting entries. It's now the end of the year. Every year at the end of the year, the accounting year, I should say, may not be a, may not be a calendar year, though most companies are on a calendar year, meaning their year runs from January 1 to December 31, 12-month period. That's a calendar year. Many companies run fiscal years. It's still a 12-month period. I had a client's corporation once that it's a conning year. It's fiscal year ran from February 1, was the first day of their year, through January 31, 12 months later. It's still a 12-month period. The college is on a fiscal year. St. Vincent's College, their accounting year starts July 1 and goes for 12 months, and it ends on June 30th, the last day of the month of June. It's a 12-month period. So once you've prepared the financial statements for that year, that accounting year or fiscal year, you now have to close the books before you begin the new year. It is necessary to make closing entries and that's what the next video will be about we're going to introduce the closing process and take you through that hopefully at this point in time you'll start doing a little reading in this chapter take a look at those couple pages with the worksheet it's not major exam material there may be a question or two just get familiar you start doing a little reading in this chapter Take a look at those couple pages with the worksheet. It's not major exam material. There may be a question or two. Just get familiar with it. Luckily, you don't have to do them. Years ago, we had to do these worksheets. People didn't have the, man, the, the uh, computer systems. So with that, that's the end of Chapter 4, Lecture 1 for Financial Accounting.